Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fan Dummies. I'm Greg. And I'm Aaron. In today's video, we're going to review DC's animated movie, Justice Society World War II. If you're into Justice Society of America, check out our full length podcast and other podcasts related to Justice Society in the description box below. Also, there's going to be spoilers. I mean, if you're watching a review video with no spoilers, is it really a review? I doubt it. Some people beat up some other people. Maybe you have to watch it and find out. Exactly. Some things happen that are good and some things happen that are bad, but I don't want to spoil it. All right, let's get to it. One of the things that I keep seeing online is people kind of ranting and raving about the new animation style that mm -hmm. DC is using. Did you like that? Yeah, I do like it. Me too. It seems very comic booky, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh huh. It's two D ish. It's like two D style on like a three D environment. It's it's really fun. Mm -hmm. It's colorful. There's not like weird movement. It's in four K, which is nice. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I like that a lot. Yeah, I think that helps it. What did you think about the voice actors? Do you think they cast the right people to play these roles? All the voice actors did a really great job. They didn't go the invincible route where they hired really well-known mm -hmm. like actors. Maybe they do voice, but maybe they're more primarily into screen acting. Right. It's kind of fun that they went the route of casting people who do primarily voice acting. So I think that those people are really talented as well, even though you don't know who they are, but as I was looking up all these people, I was like, oh, yeah, I know who all these people are anyway. Mm -hmm. So they ended up being pretty popular actors, at least to me. Yeah, they're not A-list celebrities. Yeah. But they have appeared in things that we watch. Yeah. And like I in like their that. physical form. I don't care what you're in. As long as I've seen you, I think it's fun. Yeah, for sure. For I sure. Know. I nerd out about the actors all the time. So I think it's always fun. We just finished talking a lot of crap about this movie, right? We just did a top five biggest issues segment where basically it was like all the bad things. I think there are good points though. Like we're not just nitpicking at the movie. Yeah. So I guess my question is, is did you find this movie entertaining at all? I think for like entertainment value without knowing much about the JSA or Earth One, Earth Two, you know, like the multiverse and everything. I think that if you just went into it and watched it, I think you'd be entertained. Mm -hmm. It was way more entertaining than the Superman Man of Tomorrow movie oh, that we man. watched right before it. That thing was a snooze fest. Yeah. <laughs> so I think in that aspect, I think it's entertaining. But I don't think the story is as strong as it could have been. Yeah. I mean, we watch so many animated shows and movies of anything. And, and I could sit there and just be gripped for, you know, the whole 30 minutes or an hour or whatever. And this movie, it's just it just doesn't hold you the whole time. Yeah, I completely agree. But it does have enough action sequences, and I like seeing the characters and stuff. That's the entertainment I got out of it, I guess. Yeah, I think this movie was designed for people who are not fans of DC. Mm. Because it's hard to know so much about the JSA and watch them just like butcher the timeline and butcher the characters and have things happen that have no canon or you know, wonder like, are they retconning, you know, Steve Trevor's death, mm. you know, is did this stuff with Aquaman really happen? Because there's decades of Aquaman comic books. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you went into this movie knowing nothing, I think you'll be happier with it, honestly. Yeah. But it just seems like as I was watching it, I just had more and more questions. And then by the time the movie was over, it didn't answer a lot of those questions. Mm -hmm. And then so it, it just kind of left me thinking the story was just weak. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about the setting? Did you like the fact that it was in the 1940s? I did like how it's back in the 1940s, but I'm not 100% happy with the wartime. Mm -hmm. I just think that it seems like Marvel DC, it was popular back then to have comic characters during the war. And that was something that got people through. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's cool about that, but it just seems like I'd rather have a more modern story, I think. And like when we got Barry Allen and Iris in 
the modern time, I think the and, and Superman and Brainiac, I think I would rather watch that movie. Yeah, I agree. I think if Barry Allen just disappeared and then came back and killed Brainiac and went like, whoa, like you wouldn't believe what just happened to me. And then yeah. continued on with the rest of the story. Yeah. Like they could have joined the Justice League right then and there. Yeah. And it could have been the formation of the Justice League where I think people probably know those characters a lot better. Yeah, it could have been a big fight with Brainiac. Maybe he really wasn't dead or he disappears and goes up to space and yeah. you know, tries to take over. Either way, the JSA really is designed to be in World War II. That's the only thing that I that I will say that they did right. Now, if you're going to take those characters and you're going to re-envision them and reimagine them in a modern setting, I think that that's okay too. Well, we kind of get that in the Star Girl show. Yeah, yeah. But to mix the World War II setting plus the reimagining together, mm -hmm. I think just was a little bit strange. Plus, we didn't really get to see any of the cool stuff that the JSA was really fighting against. Like they were just like in France battling frontline Nazis when really the Nazis were trying to get the spear of destiny and finding all these artifacts. Yeah. Like they could have been fighting against that stuff. I think that would have been a lot cooler. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. More like an Indiana Jones type. Exactly. Adventure movie. Yeah. They could have had the superheroes. And that's where our man would have been very effective. He could have been in the airplane mm -hmm. and he could, you know, take his serum and drop down onto the pyramid and fight the Nazis save the artifact and and whatever it just was poorly written mm -hmm. i mean i don't know really what else to to say about it i thought that because it was the superheroes that we know and like that made it fun yeah I yeah maybe you can't go wrong with having wonder woman exactly and i really like our man yeah when he's used properly yeah. and i loved seeing him in a movie because of star girl i think it it kind of gives some some background to star girl his our man's son is one of the new new jsa yeah in star girl the math doesn't line up don't overthink it <laughs> but but it's good to see what our man in his original form was like i yeah. think that was fun yeah but i just think that it was the wrong team where was the green lantern the green lantern and flash started the jsa where were they mm -hmm. like we saw the flash, but where's Green Lantern? Yeah, it seems like they're leaving out a big component of the JSA. Yeah. Leaving out the Green Lantern. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You know, and honestly, Starman. And, yeah. And a lot of them. Uh -huh. Like, there's a lot of major JSA superheroes that, that were not in this. There were so many things that they could have done. But what I want to try to convey is that it's still a decent superhero movie to kind of just see superheroes do superhero stuff. Yeah. Like you get to see Dr. Fate in a weird kind of old and frail way, which mm -hmm. is really strange. Yeah. And then it was kind of hard to even know that it was Dr. Fate. Yeah. The only way you knew is because of the fate symbol. Yeah. When the flash was going through the speed force, you would see the, fate symbol mm -hmm. and then when dr fate disappeared at the end which he, was he a prisoner like what was going on was he just like waiting is he dead like what happened to him mm -hmm. like he disappeared into the fate symbol that's how you knew yeah and they had a perfect time to introduce him they said something like do you know this guy and he said, so yeah yeah from a long time ago and i'm thinking to myself like huh like a long time ago like like they, these people have just met, like the JSA is, is relatively new. Yeah. You know, world war two is, you know, however long it is, you know, it goes on for six years or whatever. It's not like they knew each other for a really long time. They left out the villain monologue where they tell the plan. Exactly. <laughs> like, so we have no idea what's going on, but it was still fun. I think that the Superman thing could have been interesting if they would have spent a little more time on it, but all in all, I'll say two and a half stars. What do you think, Aaron? 
Yeah, probably two and a half as well. Yeah. I think it's if you want to go into it watching it just because you love the DC characters, go watch it for that. If you want it for a complex story, then don't expect that. There's so many errors. One is I forget which character. One character suggested Wonder Woman use the lasso of truth, oh. which she didn't have it on her. For some of the scenes, I don't know if she always had it, but I think it was hanging on her belt. Yeah, but it wasn't on her when they suggested that she use it. Mm. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Like they forgot to draw it on uh. her belt or wherever it was. There are all sorts of weird things which make me think that it was written by somebody who doesn't know DC Comics as deeply as they should. You don't even have to know that much about DC Comics just to keep it. Yeah. Yeah consistent you needed like a lore master yeah to to watch this thing first or like a canon expert to watch this thing first and go okay like we need to change this we need to adjust this if we're gonna do this thing with superman we have to make it clear this is not earth two you know we have to do these other things yeah even just watching it before we like really sat back and analyzed it like it's just still not good like even after we watched it and looked more into it like so it's not even that you know we knew all this stuff up front that that's what's driving us crazy about it yeah it was just the plot yeah that really was mediocre but we did at the end go well it was better than superman man of tomorrow yeah <laughs> which which it was yeah i mean it's got entertaining points it's got sweet points some of the characters die yeah so, I mean, they, they try to throw a bunch of stuff at you. It's just, I don't know how much you actually feel for the characters. Yeah. But all in all, let's say two and a half stars. If you have HBO Max, I would wait. And I would definitely watch it when it comes to HBO Max. It's PG-13, so you can watch this thing with your medium-aged children, <laughs> teenagers. That's another thing. It's like, I'm used to the DC mm -hmm. animated movies being R. And then they're a little bit more graphic or violent. Mm -hmm. And this movie kind of falls in that middle spot. Like, are these superheroes that we know that don't kill people, are they actually killing people in the war? That, that's confusing to me. They are. Like, you see Superman, he's always all about not killing people. And, and he's up there just destroying the airplanes. Just stuff like that. You could have the superheroes do the bad stuff. If you do that universe, but when they're not in that universe, it's just weird to me. Yeah. Or if they're doing it for like a really good purpose, like they're killing the big bad or something. The short answer though is watch it when it comes to HBO Max. I think it's worth it. Mm -hmm. Superman Man of Tomorrow is on there now. Both things are appropriate for teens. Mm -hmm. So you shouldn't have any problems there. Obviously use your own judgment. I think they're worth watching if you're interested in this kind of thing. DC animated movies aren't usually the best to watch, but they're usually entertaining. Yeah. The Justice League dark movies are way better. Uh, but this is, you know. And those have a really dark element to them, too. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching, Fan Dummies. Let us know what you thought of Justice Society World War II down in the comments. Did you like it? What did you like about it? You know, tell us specifically what you liked and what you didn't like, and we can take this conversation into the comments. As a reminder, we talk superheroes and science fiction every single week. So if you're into that, give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss anything. We are at Fan Dummies on all social media. So follow us on whatever social media you're on. We have a Facebook group that you can join. We would love to interact with you there. And as always, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. We have some other DC and Justice Society videos up here you can check out. So, you know, watch some more. <laughs>